Do you know what wholesaling is? This real estate-ish, real estate investor thing? Anyway, wholesaling is presenting a contract to a seller, and then you're going to take that contract and sell it to another end buyer. Hopefully the seller knows, but to be honest, a lot of times they don't understand that that's what's going to happen. And they're just putting in uh, the possibility of assigning the contract into the original contract. But wholesaling is weird. Uh, it's very frowned upon in a lot of jurisdictions across the country because some consider it practicing real estate without a license, which is correct since you're technically involved in the sale of real estate without a license and you are not a licensed broker or agent and you're transferring a contract. However, it's done all over the place. But I want to tell you why most wholesalers fail as real estate investors today. There's a variety of reasons. Number one, most wholesalers, most, not all, there's a very small percentage that really understand the business and do a great job and make a lot of money uh, doing it. But number one, most wholesalers, if you just take it from looking at forums and everybody saying they want to be a wholesaler, most wholesalers get into the business because they think it's a stepping stone to becoming an investor, i.e. quick money on wholesales. The way that a wholesaler makes money in his deal, they buy, put a contract on a house for 200,000, and then they take that contract and they sell it to an end buyer or investor for 220,000. The 20,000 in the middle is gonna be the thing that comes to, Ken, to them. The end buyer is gonna be paying the closing costs or the original seller. Um, so, you know, it's got to be a deal that only can get access through the wholesaler, which is why the good ones do well. They know how to source properties and they know how to explain the process. But wholesaling is not the stepping stone to real estate investment wealth. And that's really why most fail right away. Because if you're going into any business and you're thinking, I want to get into a business and I want to do really well and make money, but I have no money to spend. I don't have a job. I have no real estate skills. I don't have any previous real estate knowledge. I don't know how to evaluate repair costs of a property and I don't have access to do proper uh, after repair value. How the hell are you going to be a wholesaler? You're not, you're going to fail. And that's the number one reason why most wholesalers fail because they don't get into it to build knowledge around real estate. They're looking for the quick scale to say that they're gonna be a real estate investor, it's hard. Being a wholesaler is really hard and it costs money, P.S., it's not free. If, how could you do wholesaling for free? You just walk out on the corner and say, hey, anybody looking to sell their house? Oh, great, Bob, you were looking to sell? Great, I'm gonna write you a contract. No, actually, I don't have a proof of funds. I don't have any money at all, actually, but I'm gonna write a fake contract as if I were gonna buy it. And I'm gonna sell that contract to someone else and pocket the money in the middle. Not really sure why anyone's signing up for that program. So along the lines of the things that I say, here are some of the other reasons that wholesalers, even if they get past the first step and start to get some influx, they have some money for marketing, they have a funnel, they know how to do the intake. Here's where they get caught up. The two most important numbers uh, when you're a wholesaler are repair costs and after repair value. Your repair costs are how much it's going to take to get the property to top scalable value. Sometimes it can be less if you're looking at something that's gonna most likely be a rental, but if it's gonna be a flip for an out sale, you want to do a nice renovation and then you're gonna want the highest possible after a fair repair value. So if you have no real estate experience, how are you gonna be walking into homes over and over and not only being able to calculate in your head what each thing is gonna cost and understanding is the furnace old, is the hot water heater hold, how's the electric? How's the plumbing look? What about this back deck? Is this back deck secure? If you don't know any of that, how are you gonna take that property and then market it out on a private list to other people, because when you do it, you have to say normally, if you're smart, you're putting out what you believe the estimated repair value is. Because that's their whole, people who are buying from wholesalers are trying to save the time. They don't wanna do their own marketing. They wanna get a deal off market, not involved with agents, but the numbers have to be correct. So if you don't understand anything about repair value, that's not something you can like take a class on. 
because in every area, the repair value is going to be different. You can't calculate it by per square foot uh, on a whole house. That's why the numbers always suck. They just find out, oh, I'll just say X per square foot and that's it. No, I mean, what if everything's in good shape? But what if there's things that you can't see that you don't understand? Asbestos, termites, foundation issues, uh, sewer line, things that you have to do extensive inspections to find out. You know, what if you need a radon remediation system? These are all things that inexperienced wholesalers don't know. And it's why when they send us deals, the deals are terrible because the numbers are all wrong. They don't even make any sense at all. And what you couple with bad repair costs is what we always say is, Whenever we get a deal from a bad wholesaler, the repair costs are too low and the ARV is too high. The ARV after repair value is built on MLS comps and sale comps. And the only way that you can do that is with access. You can't really do it on Zillow or Redfin. It doesn't have the search capabilities for you to search a sold under a quick amount of time. So if you don't have MLS activity or you don't have an agent who's willing to provide you scalable comps that are within a half mile of your property, same beds and baths, and have sold in the past one, two, or three months, you have no idea what the property's worth. And you also have to know whether the market's moving up or moving down. So you can say, look, these are the comparables, but we still have a 45-day window to close where other ones are going to close and we need to know if it's going up or down because the appraisers are gonna be look at the closed sales. But remember, there's always a window between when you go under contract and then when you close 30, 45 days. And in that time, there's more properties that are gonna close that are either gonna help or hinder your potential appraisal value on the property. So for a new wholesaler to not know ARV and not understand the repair costs aspect, there's literally no way you can do the job because there's no way anyone's gonna take you seriously when all of your numbers are wrong. Here's a couple, you know what, I didn't even, I mean, you probably have seen a video on my channel before, so I'll just remind you. I'm Jonathan Green. I've been investing for more than 30 years. I own an off-market property acquisition company called Streamline Properties. We're on the web at Streamlined with a D dot properties. We also have an on-market team, Streamline Properties on market, brokered by eXp Realty. Um, but look, part of our goal is exposing parts of real estate that people really need to know about. And I'm not, I mean, I don't love wholesaling, but I think there can be very good wholesalers if they do everything the right way. But number four, one reason why wholesalers fail as real estate investors is because they're not building relationships. They're just thinking about the money. How much money can I make off this person in distress? When if you're building relationships, you're gonna create a win-win scenario for everybody involved. Sure, you need to look at it like a business, but you're also a person because we are going to talk about the difference between a business and a commission, which is the last one. But really, I think if you look at wholesalers in general across the country or those trying to wholesale, it's really not about what it should be about. You know, they're not being upfront about the assignability of the contract. If that were properly explained, there wouldn't really be any issues. You're saying, I'm going to get X as a conduit for bringing you to other buyers. And you can't find your buyer pool if your numbers are always bad. So all of these things are really tied together. Um, and it's very difficult to become good if you're not willing to do any of these things. You need marketing and systems to be a good wholesaler. And you need to be able to explain the value proposition to the end seller, like I said, you, they don't have anyone, they don't want to go on the market, they don't want a lot of foot traffic. So you have to explain there's going to be a little bit of foot traffic because I need to bring in my best, most vetted buyers to buy your house. The last reason that wholesalers fail, there's probably hundreds of them. It's an, it's an interesting thing to think about when you look at the industry and when we talk a lot in the forums. <clears throat> on sites about how it could be characterized as the unlicensed practice of real estate. Um, but what I find wholesalers doing in is they're not treating it like a business. They're just looking for a one-off. <clears throat> they're looking to make that money on it. And they're not thinking like, okay, I need a name. I need a business. I need to market that business. And I need to market my expertise in that business to drive traffic to a funnel that can then call back respond with values, nurture sellers, and go through it. A lot of people start just thinking they're going to call in the phone book or cold call for wholesalers. And like, I don't think I can, that's just like counting beans. You're going to cold call the phone book. 
you know, or even if you build a list, that list is only going to be about 25% decent. You know, you have to be targeting a certain uh, part of real estate to be a good wholesaler. Like if you're just targeting everything, you're going to need a hundred dialogues to get through it. If you're really thinking you're like, well, I really want to focus on absentee owners, 20 years owned, uh, who have hundred percent equity. Those, those are great. That's a much easier deal. And then there's potential, potential seller financing in there. But in general, I don't know what anyone else is telling you about wholesaling. Almost all wholesalers fail or don't do a good job. For those wholesalers who are good, good job. But I'd still be real concerned about the regulations in the area. Um, but look, there's lots of sellers who don't want to transact on market. So us as agents, we can't get every deal. You know, you have to be willing to work and help someone. And sometimes helping someone can be through the wholesaling process because it's less paperwork, less to do, as long as you explain it correctly. That's it for today. That's like kind of wholesaling 101, though. So I hope that was helpful. Uh, but again, it's not a slight on all wholesalers, although I'm not a big fan. Uh, it's just really the truth on most. Have a great day.